Hey, this is Rusty from InnerRange. I'm here to talk with you for a few minutes about the newly released InnerRange detectors. So these detectors are something that we have partnered with Optex for. We've partnered with them for quite some time. Um, anyone that doesn't know Optex, Optex are one of the global leaders in terms of electronic security peripheral products, uh, especially detectors. And so this is not an OEM relationship with Optex. This is actually a layer deeper, so to speak. So this is an ODM relationship where the D is all about design. So we've partnered with Optex to customize and design these detectors uh, for inner range systems, which I'll go to in just a moment. So we have three detectors on display. We have the single technology uh, PIR, the dual technology PIR and microwave sensor, and the tri-technology PIR, microwave, and anti-masking detector. What you'll probably notice in these boxes is that these have the IR ready tick on them. So what this means, and this is my reference point about the design part of our relationship with Optex, is we have worked with them to customize an inner range end of line PEU module that fits uh, inner range systems as the 2K2, 2K2 end of line resistor values for our products. This is all about saving time, saving money. If you as the security technician or even the owner of the business don't have to waste time manually fitting off resistors and, and dropping resistors and having issues with service work, with, uh, with resistors or junior technicians that may not know how to fit off an end of line module, this does away with all those problems. This solution really scales up very well. So as the site becomes larger with many detectors, fitting off these detectors uh, is simply four wires. That's all you need, no resistors, and it's all about saving that time and money, as I said. So let's have a look at some of these in a little bit more detail. So the first detector I'm just gonna have a look at um, is this single technology PIR. Just some helpful information on the box itself. Uh, you might be interested in knowing about the field of view, the detection zone. You can set that up in two, dif two different ways, whether that's wide or narrow field of view, and that's true for all of these detectors. And then you have this QR code. So I talk about the installation manual and the technical details. So if you need that at any point, just simply scan the QR code, really simple. So let's go ahead and open up this detector. It's nicely packed. Pretty straightforward from the outside. I'm sure we've all seen detectors before. On the back of that, uh, you can see that we have this little round nodule. So that round nodule is for any installations where you need to mount the detector on the ceiling. So there's a range of accessories and bracket options if you need to do so. The vast majority of installations would probably simply be on the wall and typically be in the corner as well. And so you can see we have this nice 45 degree angle to allow for corner installations. Down the bottom, we've got the screw. This is a convenient 180 degree twist and it's a captive screw. So no longer do you have those issues or you drop the screw in that cloud of dust in that construction site and it becomes a pain. So you simply twist it, it's captive, and then pop it open. So inside the detector, uh, we can see a few things. Uh, you can obviously see the sensor itself. Uh, there's some jumper settings which you can use to adjust the sensitivity of the detector whether that's low medium or high you have the led options so if you want that led on or off and then in terms of the actual terminal and how you wire that in it's really straightforward this is all just four wires positive and negative for your power and then alarm tamper as your other two wires so what you'll see here is pretty pretty small this little black device is the inner range ready PEU module. So this is essentially the 2K2, 2K2 end of line resistor value that I was referring to. We have this piece of foam as well. Don't throw that away. This is used to keep out insects and bugs. So at the top of this detector, there's punch outs. You can just simply use a screwdriver just to leave that um, punch out uh, open, nice and, nice and straightforward. You don't need to use a drill to you know, bore through. And once you pop open that, that punch out, you feed the cable through, you put a little hole in the middle of this piece of foam and put that and wrap that nice and tight around the cable just to stop any insects and bugs coming through and tripping off the sensor, right? 
And then, as I said before, in terms of wiring, really straightforward, just four wires. You can wire a fifth wire if you wanted to, and this is into the LED control option. So you've got two options in controlling the LED. You can use the jumper setting, which is like a permanent setting, or you've got the remote LED. So the remote LED is particularly useful. Let's say, for example, you have a public setting where there's a lot of general public moving around the facility during daytime. You don't want that LED being triggered and shown necessarily because that's information link. So if someone was trying to penetrate the building, they would potentially scope out the area by looking for any blind spots. And one of the areas they can do that is by seeing if those LEDs trigger in that detector. So you have that turned off. But there are instances where you might be doing a walk test, for example, every six months or every year, and you want to turn on that LED. And you don't want to have to obviously get up to each individual PIR and, and change the dip switch settings or the jumper settings. So the remote LED allows you to control that from integrity or inception and simply remotely uh, control the LED through an output relay. That's the basic detector. I'm just gonna move across to the Tritec detector. The uh, dual technology is essentially exactly the same on the inside, except it also has a microwave sensor. Here you get some screws. This one's a little bit bigger than the other two. The other two are the same size. So again, we've got the 180 degree lock, which I've already unlocked. Open this up. Just give it a gentle pop open. There we are. Just being very gentle with that. This one's slightly different to the other two in that you have this terminal strip on the back as opposed to being fixed on the actual PCB itself. So this makes installation even easier. And again, this scales up. So if you have a, a large system, you can actually go ahead and pre-fit off these off the wall. You can do your punch out, bring your cable through, even terminate those wires, but not actually clip on the detector until you're ready. So it allows uh, you know, different uh, project managers or commissioning technicians to actually verify it's been fitted off before we actually snap that detector into place. So a nice convenient option there. Again, you've got that piece of foam and this black terminal strip actually snaps out. So if you've got fat fingers like I do and you just wanna make it nice and easy, you can just snap that out and then snap it in once you're done. The inside of this detector is a little bit different to the other two. Uh, for a start, just working from top to bottom, you can see the Metal pins obviously align with the terminal block. We, this little black guy here, he's your inner range ready PU module. And then instead of jumper settings, we actually have dip switch settings for this detector. And so there's a range of different settings. We can see there's uh, sensitivity options for the PIR, sensitivity options for the anti-masking component of this detector, and then sensitivity settings for the microwave part using this rotary dial. The other difference with this particular detector is that it has a down zone detection area that you can optionally choose to use. By default, it's off. If you want to flick that down, it's now on. And so when the detector is mounted with this enabled, it detects not directly down, but on a slight angle, any movement that is uh, almost directly below that detector will be picked up as part of its detection zone. And that's it. So thanks for watching. If you have any more questions, please check out the technical manual. Please get in contact within a range or talk to your local account manager. Thanks so much.